The Barrel House is brought to you by you, the listener, and those of you who have chosen to support the show over at patreon.com slash barrelhouse, especially our Whiskey Legend tier patrons, Greg, Katie, Lauren, and Joe. Without you, the show wouldn't be possible. Hello, and welcome to The Barrel House. Hello and welcome back to the Barrel House. I'm your host, Joe Kane, and today we're going to be talking about a blue spot. I'm, I'm not going to do that for a whole episode. That's miserable. You shouldn't have to put up with that. I shouldn't be doing that to you. I'm sorry if I offended you with that, by the way. Also, that's horrid. That's really bad. Um, today we're going to talk about blue spot Irish whiskey. It's one of my favorite Irish whiskeys, full stop. And uh, since this episode is going to drop right on St. Patrick's Day, we're also going to talk a little bit about a couple of my favorite Irish whiskeys just to get into the spirit of things, right? Maybe unnecessarily, maybe it's a little overblown, maybe it's a lot of hype, but we're going to talk about a couple of my favorite Irish whiskeys and kind of how I like to use them. Um, Before we get into that, have to do my due diligence, pay the bills, I have to thank each and every one of you who subscribed to the show over at patreon.com slash barrelhouse for helping keep this enterprise running, whatever this might be. Um, Without your help, this wouldn't be possible. And if you don't subscribe to the Patreon, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're listening to this show. You're watching it all the time. Every, Every time it drops, twice a month, sometimes three times a month. You're checking out the live streams. You're getting all this enjoyment. You can't spare a buck a month. Not even one. I think you can. I think you can do it. But if you can't, I also appreciate the views and the shares and just tell your friends and family about it. Uh, But once again, this show is 100% totally listener supported. So I won't be taking any money or whiskey or anything from distilleries or companies that are going to have a vested interest in the reviews being overly friendly. This is what it is because of people who subscribe to the show over at patreon.com slash barrel house and keep me rolling. So now that the bills are paid onto the whiskey, we've got blue spot Irish whiskey. This is a seven year old cask strength, non chill filtered offering from Mitchell and sons. Uh, if you remember back to when I did green spot, that's another one of my favorite Irish whiskeys. It's very good. Um, this comes in at 117.4 proof. It's a little hot. It's a little hot, but it's the kind of hot I really like. You open that bottle up, let this thing breathe while we yammer a little bit. I kind of told a story of Mitchell and Sons during the Green Spot episode, but I'll give you a quick overview here. Um, they basically they were an Irish company that was running like a cafe, big wine importer, and they had all these empty wine barrels, and they thought what would be a great idea to bring the wine barrels up to the Jameson distillery at the time and fill those barrels back up and age them and sell those at the cafe also. And they would mark how old they were going to make the barrels with a big paint spot on top. So we ended up with the blue spot, the green spot, the red spot, the yellow spot, so on and so forth. Um, it's a great, they're, they're all very, very good. This is still, Middleton whiskey. It's, it, I mean, it, oh man, it is very, very good. Um, the proof will very little batch to batch. This is 117.4 though, this batch. Um, this is in X sherry casks and in new and refill bourbon barrels. Um, as well, I believe, as well, I think there might be, um, yeah, and Madeira casks. So this thing is in like all kinds of stuff. It's a, it's what all kinds of stuff this is. Uh, it's pot stilled. Um, as you can see, if you're watching the video, it's a pretty light color, although it's not, ooh, is it gonna focus? It focused. Uh, it's a pretty light color, although it's not like that very light straw color that you usually get out of scotch. There's so much going on in the nose. It's so pleasant. 
at first it's very buttery and sweet. And then I get baking spices and like depth and complexity, a little, a little bit of alcohol. The ethanol is definitely there. Man, it smells good. I could live in this nose. You can definitely smell the malt. It's not overly malty, but it's there. Cereally grain to it. It's got this like sweet fruit preserves. Like I'm getting like berries and maybe a hint of apple jam. It's very good. You can really smell the proof. The more you get into it, uh, the more you kind of notice it. Oh, but it's nice. And it's not a the, the The proof is there. You can smell it. You get that like tinge, that like light burn of ethanol in your nose, but it does not overpower anything in it. Um, it's really pleasant altogether. The palette is magnificent. I mean, I, okay, I get it. It's a little pretentious, but it's got a nice base. Uh, so it's got that. So I talked about in the green. I'm, I'm, I did too many thoughts all at once. Let me back up. Sorry. Remember when I talked about green spot, how it had a couple of hints of those typical Irish flavors, but it had its own direction. Those typical Irish flavors being something more like the heavy shortbread and preserves, maybe honey and vanilla, and then not a whole lot else in your typical Irish. It's kind of just like a mixing game of how much of each. And the green spot, you know, has just like green apple and coconut. It's got all this stuff going on. This is similar, although I would say this has a little bit more of the shortbread and uh, preserved berries that you typically get in Irish than Green Spot does. But it's also got this really nice bite from the alcohol. The cereally graininess from the barley and malted barley really is there. You can really taste that. It gives it a nice depth to it. Um, there's a note on this that I always pick up in Madeira cask whiskeys that I don't know what it is. Like I need to get some, I need to try drink some Madeira. I've never had it. I need to get into that and see if I can pull that apart and see what that actually is because I have a hard time placing that note. It's almost a little funky, kind of dry. I really like it. It's just hard. I don't know. I don't know what, what it is. It's one of those things, right? Every flavor you pull out of a whiskey is a remembering you're remembering and relating to a flavor you know of before, right? I'm not actually tasting caramel. I'm tasting something that reminds me of caramel. And I know that association. I have that association. So caramel clicks and it's caramel to me. This has a flavor that's really distinct, but I don't know what it is. It's like, I don't have the reference point to decide what it's supposed to be, but it's really good. And it's a really complete story. There is a little bit of caramel in there. It's very light. There's a lot of vanilla. It's very, very good. I really like this whiskey. The finish, a little bit of pepper on the start of the finish. Maybe even like the very end of the palate as you're swallowing, start to get a little peppery. Uh, that's definitely some of the proof. Um, you get a little bit of that uh, new oak barrel, uh, like tannin kind of taste to it. Though it's seven years, so it's not super heavy on that, but you do pick up a little bit. The fruit. And the shortbread and the barley. The barley really hangs around. That cereally note really hangs out in this one quite a bit. I like it. I like it a lot. It's a much more where green spots are very easy, like every day, just pour it, sit back, enjoy it. Don't think about it, whiskey. 
this is a more complex, more well-rounded. It has, you know, if if green spot were a I, I love green spot. This is by no means a negative <laughs> statement. But if green spot were like an equalizer, it'd be a lot of mid-range. A little bit of base, a little bit of treble, but it's not real spiky anywhere. This has a lot more bass and treble to it. It's got some more bright notes. It has a lot, some more he heavy notes at the bottom. It's a more complete experience. Uh, I really like this one a lot. I should like it a lot because it's twice as much as Green Spot. <laughs> uh, this is definitely a saver bottle, not a pounder bottle. Which brings me to, well, so you should definitely buy it if you see it. But that brings me to... The next part of this episode, I know we're moving kind of quick, but I don't want this to be a super long episode. So I'm going to move a little quick. The next part of the episode, Irish whiskey is for St. Paddy's Day. What are you doing? All right. So I have four whiskeys I want to talk about. I have three bottles right here next to me. The fourth bottle is, I think I'm out of it, but I'll tell you how I use each one of them. We'll start at the bottom. The one I don't have. Old Tom Horan. If you're making mixed drinks that are like really heavily like like whiskey and ginger ale or something like that, where the whiskey is there to just add a hint of depth to your mixed drink and it is not the centerpiece. Old Tom Horan has those Irish notes, but it's super, super cheap and you can totally wash it out with your ginger ale and it's fine. It's a, a great way to blow away St. Paddy's Day and not remember it if that's what you're shooting for. Uh, if you're doing shots or slightly more whiskey-centric mixed drinks, I go with this Powers Irish Whiskey Gold Label. Also very cheap, very good. Um, this is good neat or like mixed or shots, whatever. It goes down smooth. It's very easy. It's very unoffensive. It's got some very nice, sweet, fruity flavors to it. If you are really trying to kind of same use case as Powers, but you're trying to fancy it up a touch, I like Jameson Black Barrel for that. I think the little bit of extra char oakiness that they put in this. So if you don't know Black Barrel, they take the Jameson and they put it in recharred barrels instead of just used barrels. So it gets a lot more oaky character on it. Um, I find this to be like a, a more complex offering a little more depth and it's still not very expensive. That's a great one. If you're trying to do like shots or better mixed drinks, or even if you are trying to, this one's good for actually both of them are, but especially the black barrel is good as a neat pour. If you're trying to keep yourself on a budget, this is like 35 bucks. It's not crazy or nothing. Then my numero uno, this is my neat pour. This isn't for shots. This isn't for mixed drinks. This is if you're going to have a neat pour for St. Patrick's day, this is red breast cask strength, the 12 year. I love this. This is a tremendous bottle of whiskey. It's super good. It is very down home plate for Irish whiskey. It has all of those real Irish whiskey notes, but just turned up to 11 with a bunch of proof. Uh, this is, what is this? This is like 55, yeah, 55.8%. So I can't do math. I don't know what that is in proof. What's the math in that? 111.6 proof. Um, it's very good. That is a tremendous neat sipper. It's like 75, 80 bucks, something like that, depending on where you are. I think I've seen it as low as 65, but at nearly twice what the Jameson is, it definitely requires you being willing to spend uh, a lot more on your whiskey than if you're going for like a Jameson or something like that. Uh, Green Spot's a great choice also if you want a neat sipper. It's like 60, but I left it off of this list because it is not... It's Irish, but it does not follow that like traditional, like I said earlier, like traditional Irish whiskey flavors, those notes. And I felt like I wanted to stick to like your stereotypical Irish notes for this one, for the St. Patrick's Day episode. Um, There's a couple other real good ones out there. If you're looking for something a little special, if you're 
if you're trying to get something that people don't have never seen or heard of before, there's a bunch of like Nopod castles, a good, good bottle. You can get like the 12 year Nopod castle and that's, that's good. And it's unique. You don't see it very often. Um, Row and Co is another one that's very good. I mean, I'm just listing off the Irish whiskeys, whiskeys I like enough to own right now, right? Yeah, I think that's most of them. That's most of the ones I have down here at the moment. Obviously, straight up Jameson, if you're looking for that direction, is totally fine. It's not my favorite, but it is totally fine, um, especially for shots. It's cheap and good for shots. So, I mean, there it is. St. Patrick's Day. Have one of each. Drink responsibly, though. I am not condoning unnecessary drinking. I would never do such a thing as to say get drunk for St. Patrick's Day. Uh, those days are kind of long behind me at this point, but um, enjoy it. Enjoy your St. Patrick's Day. I'm going to try to drop this like early in the morning or maybe even the night before so that you can get a look at this before your St. Patrick's wasted. But um, thanks for stopping by and checking it out. All the patrons, thanks for supporting the show. Check out barrelhousepodcast.com. There's links to the Eerglue Media Discord. This should also be in the show notes, wherever you're at. Um, there's links to merch store and stuff. That stuff's, I think, all on sale right now at the T Public. I'm pretty sure, or is going to be on sale very soon. So keep an eye on that. Um, if you have an Irish whiskey that you love that you didn't hear about on this episode, you should let me know uh, on the Instagram or wherever. The TikTok is doing great. People are loving those that are very dumb, but they're very fun. So, um, barrelhousepodcast.com. Rate, review the show on iTunes also. That goes a long way. We really appreciate that. Um, and have a good St. Patrick's Day. Go enjoy it. You earned it. You absolutely earned your St. Patrick's Day. So, uh, until next time, drink whiskey, be merry, and take care. The Barrel House is written, produced, and hosted by Joe Kane, and it's a proud member of the Earglue Media Network. Views and opinions expressed on this show belong only to the mouth they came out of. And as always, please remember to drink responsibly. Slanjava. Slanjava.